Okay, so this is the, med the December 4th, 2019 meeting of the Community Resources Committee. We have a quorum here. We are expecting one member to show up late and I assume the other member will be here at some point. Um, so I'm calling the meeting to order at 8.34. We are being videotaped. Um, the first order of business is general public comment. This is gonna be on anything within CRC's purview. Um, except for the discussion on the downtown parking working group priority recommendations, I will take public comment when we're discussing that later in the meeting. Is there any public comment? I am not seeing any, so we will move on to discussion items, the memo from the downtown parking working group priority recommendations. <laughs> so moving along on our agenda, um, this one was referred to the Community Resources Committee on November 18th. Hi, Andy. Um, we have our fourth member. We first talked about this at our last meeting, and we have brought it back, and we have two individuals here to help us through this discussion because we kind of ran into some problems at the first discussion of this. And so we have the former chair of the Downtown Parking Working Group, Christine Gray Mullen, who also happens to be our current planning board chair, and we have our economic development director in town, Jeff Kravitz. Um, so, if you guys want to take seats, um, and then when you get settled, I'll go through sort of some of the questions and sticking points we had at the last meeting, and then we'll have a discussion and all. And thank you both for coming so bright and early in the morning, and, <laughs> and to Christine, who thought she was done when we dissolved the committee two, <laughs> two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so last discussion, we talked, we had a nice discussion, but we were curious about, you know, we were tasked with reporting back to the town council on these three priority recommendations of the now dissolved downtown parking working group. And, and we wanted to have a better discussion on all of them, and we didn't feel we ourselves were well enough involved and knowledgeable to have that discussion. So we thank you for coming to hopefully give us the knowledge that we seem to be lacking. Um, some of the things we were looking for was what the difference between a, a parking benefit district and a transportation fund would be, um, why one might be better than another, what could they be, you know, all of that. So that I think is gonna be one of the things that we talk a lot about today to give us an idea because we just don't have all of that knowledge. Um, in terms of signage, we wanted to know, we know stuff's in progress, we know stuff's not, what's timing, what's not, is there a benefit to doing it piecemeal or not, things like that was our questions on signage um, and wayfinding and all of that. And then the first one was the parking management position. I think we mainly, we're not sure whether this, that part should be in finance committee or not, but one of the things I think we wanted to discuss and talk about is and hear about from you guys' point of view is what that might that look like from Jeff's point of view as economic development director um, and from the downtown parking working group's point of view why that was one of your highest priorities or actually it was listed number one um, and what the thinking behind that was in a little more detail than you were able to give the council when you brought these to the council. So that's sort of a summary of why we asked you to be here. Um, do, do, we, do you guys wanna start with talking about some of that or would you rather have question, direct questions to answer? <laughs> um, we're definitely here to provide answers and clarifications. I think the other reason, at least why I'm here, is to help keep you out of the weeds because I know with parking, it's really easy to start trying to solve parking problems and it's really a very large holistic system that you have to be careful, you tweak one side and it could be yourself something else. So um, so going into that, I suggest you go through the one, two, three recommendations, starting with the first. Sounds good. So <laughs> um, the first one was the dedicated parking management position. So um, let's start with you, Christine, because you ran the committee that said this is our highest priority. And what the question I guess I have is, what's the reasoning behind that being the highest priority? It's pretty can simple. Can you move the mic a little yeah. closer? It's pretty Thanks. simple. Sorry, it's morning. 
Um, it's pretty simple. It's about uh, having somebody responsible for the system and the entire system, maintenance and um, operations and improving it. Uh, there's lots of people who are in charge of parts of it right now, but nobody is in charge of the whole thing and looks at it, like I said, holistically as, as one big system. Um, or even has the power or the clout, you know, you're mostly dealing with other department heads or superintendents, that kind of thing. So you really need someone who is tasked to do parking and make it the best that it can be. And, you know, make it high functioning and improvements and planning and tie it into the other parts that parking touches everything. It touches economic development, it touches public transportation, it touches, um, you know, how how residents use uh, and get around, and of course, green elements, sustainability. So we just realized over and over again, even as when we did the changes back in 2017, if you don't have someone who is going to see this through, then it probably won't happen. How's that, you got, Jeff, do you have anything else? Yeah, I, I actually brought visual aids, um, <laughs> and, and I'll hand these out. So this, this is a, uh, some charts that I created as soon as I, w you know, within the first week or two because I wanted to understand the entire parking system. And uh, to echo what Christine said, it's really complicated. And so I'll, I'll hand it out and one page is sort of just all the different <coughs> places people can park and then on the back are sort of the parking system users. And if you've seen this, I don't need to hand them out, but, um, and uh, the staff involved in it. So just point being that it's really complicated and there are a lot of moving parts and so I would echo with Christine that sure. having one person um, that thinks about all the parts and how they're interrelated is critical. That would be fantastic to see this. So Jeff and I didn't coordinate this but this is perfect so um, thank you. This exactly shows you the departments and the different areas. And we would refer back to this document quite often to sort of ground ourselves in what, like I said, you change one thing, it impacts many other things. And we will, for, for those watching at home and all, we will get this into the packet for today's meeting for other visual users. Um, So it looks like staff-wise is sort of where we should be concentrating on today. And looking at that chart, the council for the regulations, then it goes to the manager, then it goes to the working group, which has been dissolved. So I guess from the manager, it comes to then the economic development for coordination, police for enforcement, treasurer collector for appeals, fines, fees, and permits, planning for coordination, DPW for maintenance and engineering, and the senior center also issues permits. That's all six different entities, it looks like, under the town manager. Um, Andy? Uh, good morning. So I have a couple questions. Uh, one is, um, have you looked at other communities and their management structure? And from that, do you have a sense of the job description or um, the amount of time that would be required in a full-time equivalent kind of measurement so we get a picture of what it is that would be required to manage a system of this complexity. Uh, so I guess that's one round of questions. And uh, then it gets into the other question that I think of from my finance committee side is, is this realistically somebody who can, in the restructuring of government, we can take somebody from within and restructure a position? Or are we really needing to hire and put that into the uh, budget for the Transportation Enterprise Fund or the parking district, whichever it ends up being? I, going back to towns or cities, I think it depends on how complicated their parking system is. And it could be anywhere from what we have sort of now, whoever wants to pick it up, to um, part-time to full-time. Uh, there's running the system and basic maintenance and operations, but I think what we're talking here about is implementation of new things, whether it be 
correcting permit systems or upgrading machinery or changing fee structure. It, it's all initiatives, and I think you all know that that takes time. You have to plan, you have to execute, and then you have to tweak. So reading that very large report, you see there's a lot of initiatives that have been recommended. So the way I look at it is for the first couple of years at least, it, it could be a full-time job if you all were choosing lots of initiatives. Of course, that could be pared down, it could be taken slower, you know, that's to be determined. But if you notice, we tied it in there not just with parking, but it was also, you could tie it in with transportation. And um, I'll just flip you all back to 2015. There was a parking consulting, parking, uh, I'm sorry, transportation plan that included some parking initiatives in it, but it was far more comprehensive than that. And it had suggested a lot of um, changes and improvements, and a lot of them tie into sustainability and green and enhancing your system and transportation. If parking is like this, transportation is like this. So if there was any extra time for this person, they could start to dive into the transportation issues that are still really haven't happened. There's a matrix you can look at in the transportation plan, and you can see we're woefully about four years behind where we thought we would be with that. And these things are going to come up again. I mean, we were in a transition time here, I think, in this town. But now with the master plan being re-looked at, you, you see how it all integrates together and a lot of these initiatives are going to be combined. And parking and transportation, a lot of it is combined. So um, keep all that in mind. I think it's what you all determine it to be. I, of course, would like to see someone who is solely dedicated to parking and, and transportation. Um, whether that's an in-house person, I don't know all the qualifications and experience of the in-house people or who has, I'll say it, um, free time for this. Um, I know the planning department is, I work closely with them through planning board. They seem pretty tapped out. Um, I know that they have a person they need to rehire, but even with that, I don't see someone who has the bandwidth to take on this. So, um, and I also look at it as, if we segue to the next one, uh, I hope the funding, um, it is there. It's just choices. So as you look at what, how the transportation fund is spent, it's, it's like any budget. You've got to figure out what initiatives are the most important and where you're going to put the money to those. Dorothy. Well, I would recommend a person who is full-time dedicated to this task because just in the issue of looking at three blocks of one street, it's been like an archaeological expedition in which we discover new people bring little pieces of, oh, this happened this year, that happened that year. It's too chaotic for somebody to pick this up to do with their left hand, I think, while doing other things. Just finding out and making, saying, this is what was done, and then what happened? And following it up, so it's layers and layers of really of an archaeological um, discovery process. It's too chaotic, and I, I just want to put in a little plug that we're in a very transitional time but in terms of how we deal with transportation, but we can't just go forward, which is reducing emissions and getting cars out of the place, because um, a lot of this town is run by old people. During the snow, I went to the uh, local historical district meeting. It was snowing. It, everything was shut down. And I went in this crowded room, and it was filled with people. There may have been a few young people there, but there were a lot of canes. And I'm saying old people with canes went out in the m massive snow to do the business of the town. And, and they need cars. So it's, it's a very difficult time with our uh, concern about the climate, but also dealing with the people who live in the town right now. So I'm, I'm going to follow up with sort of Andy's comment, and then I think we'll move on to the benefit district, because that's the one I think we need the most help with. Um, and that is, it, you talked about for the first few years, seeing it as full time, is this then something that once implementation of, say, the transportation plan and the parking study that we just did is done, and I'm not saying it could be determined to be done at any time, but once much of that's been done, is this something that's then viewed as maybe 
going away or not? You know, in terms of I'm, I'm putting on a finance hat I don't have on, but is this sort of a temporary five, six year position to get us into implementation and then that could potentially be managed since the changes would be done. I, how, how do you foresee something like that? I don't think it will ever be done. <laughs> I think as Dorothy kind of pointed out, we're moving into a changing time in transportation. Yes, there's pressure to, for people to get out of their cars, whether or not they do that, or if they, it changes more to electrical or whatever, but something does have to change, and I think there's uh, gonna be more um, shared ride um, that changes things, that, uh, hopefully more bus usage, uh, maybe maybe there'll be more like senior vans bringing people around and, and that kind of thing. Um, and more people hopefully walking. If you provide them with comfortable walking spaces, then people are more comfortable to do it. Um, so, and my favorite, of course, autonomous is gonna go in there in the next <laughs> 10 to 15 years, which will change everything again. So I don't think it ever will be done I think there'll always be initiatives and improvements. Signs get old, technology changes. Um, I think the percentage of how much they have to dedicate to parking might change. But again, that's why I'm tying it to the transportation. Okay, and Jeff? Uh, yeah, I, I would just add that one of the repeated things in the report is collection of data and, and, and analysis. Um, and. Uh, I know that, that there were some questions about, and I have the same questions about how do you have a consistent parking system when you're saying with every year or every six months you change prices or you change hours of enforcement. And I, so I think there's a little inconsistency in the report, um, but I think the data collection and data analysis is important. Um, as there are fewer cars on the road or different transportation options, maybe there's a reduced demand of parking, so maybe you decide to lower rates or change hours of enforcement. So I, I agree with Christine that there's, in my mind, sort of two phases. One is how do we make the system we have now more efficient, more user-friendly, more accessible? Um, and then once we have an efficient, user-friendly system, how do you maintain it in that way so that it doesn't slowly over time become less efficient and, and less useful? Pat? Um, I'm wondering if you talked about money being shifted in the transportation fund. Can either of you provide some idea of shifts that you think would be beneficial for the efficiency of transportation and parking? I won't suggest how to change it, but I will say it's like any budget. It's like your household budget. A new expense comes in and you have to figure out, well, priorities, what is more important, or what can possibly get shifted somewhere else. It was, it's called a transportation fund, so loosely, I, I don't know if you have the budget, the transportation fund in front of you, I do. Um, we I'm could sorry. probably yeah, pull Yeah, you might want to look at that, but I suggest on page, what is this thing that comes from? The, the, the budget. The, the budget. budget book. I don't usually look <laughs> yeah. at the budget. Um, on page 172, if you go to that one, there's a little pie chart that shows you where the money goes to. Um, I like simplification rather than all the numbers. And, you know, 38% of it already comes, goes to personnel, staff paying for them, and 22% of the budget goes to their benefits. So there's quite a bit there. That's a lot of people. You gotta look at those people, how much are they contributing to these parking or transportation needs, and maybe there's some shifting that has to go on there. Um, there's 18% that's other, which we'd have to uh, obviously dive deeper. Um, you know, then there's 4% for the bike share, 4% for the bid assessment, 14% um, for uh, intergovernmental, which I'm not sure what that means either. So, but just looking at that pie chart, I think there's areas that could be explored and, and of course then the finance, they have to figure out, well, do those things stay or do they get paid from a different fund? But I can't stress enough that this money is generated from a parking system. I think its first priority should be to fix the parking system and tie it into transportation and possibly beautification of downtown that ties into the whole landscape and encouraging people to use alternative modes and find parking and be safe. 
That's a great segue into the number two priority recommendation, <laughs> which is create a dedicated funding source to pay for downtown parking and transportation improvements. So um, can, I, I think this question probably goes better to Jeff. My mind is what does, we've heard our transportation fund pays for, you know, as Christine just said, May, the receipts are mainly parking receipts, um, but then pays for things like buses, the Valley Bike Share was pointed out, the intergovernmental might actually be the PVTA assessment. Um, you know, um, but what, you know, sort of what does our transportation fund pay for now? If, if you can help us out with that, Jeff, and, and what would converting to a parking benefits district within the downtown area, parking area, sort of prohibit, you know, what could that pay for? So what would be lost in the transportation fund payment if we converted it to just a downtown? Like what couldn't we use it for that we use it for now is one of my sort of top questions. Yeah, so I think that, um, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that there's a uh, an assumption in there that uh, that may not be correct. So if, if it would be helpful, I'll actually read the statute that creates parking benefits district. Um, and basically it says, uh, you can define a geographic area in which parking revenue is collected therein, um, may be designated in whole or in part for use in that district through a dedicated fund um, with the purposes listed in a different section, I'll give you all the citations and, and um, if you want to submit the actual uh, statutes. Um, it may be monitor, uh, managed by a body designated by the municipality, I thought this was interesting, including but not limited to a business improvement district or Main Street organization. So even if we wanted to get out of the parking game, we could do that um, <laughs> as far as management. Uh, and then some of the uses that, that were listed by statute are acquisition, installation, maintenance of, uh, and operation of parking meters, which is already what the transportation fund does. Um, regulation of parking, parking enforcement officers, I think. Uh, salaries of parking management personnel, improvements to the public realm and transportation improvements, including but not limited to operations of mass transit and facilities for biking and walking. So. Taking those two things together, I see it as saying, you can create a pet parking benefits district that either takes all of the revenue and apportions some of it to within the geographic boundaries, or you can, I believe you can take a transportation fund and a parking benefits district and say the parking benefits district, a percentage of the parking funds go into that and that's only gonna be within the geographic area. The rest of it can be in the transportation fund and be used outside of it. The way I read the statute, and I certainly would want town attorney to look at it as well, is it includes mass transit, so I don't think there would be any problems with, with PVTA. Um, some of the other things that the current transportation fund funds are the bike share program. Um, I think that I am not clear on whether or not the transportation fund capital is, it's, I think it's clear it's used for maintenance of meter heads, installation of um, new kiosks, new equipment, but um, whether or not it's maintenance of sidewalks and crosswalks, if that's capital from, from the transportation fund or if that's um, Department of Public Works capital budget, I'm, I'm not clear on that. but. Clearly, I think transportation fund would be eligible for that. Um, you know, I, I think that what I've seen as well is their beautification efforts. Um, so I would argue that things like the, the potential uh, redevelopment of the North Common area would could be used for transportation funds. It's related to transportation. It would be, um, you know, the walkways through is, is transportation related. So I think that there are a number of things. I, I don't think it's as limited as maybe originally it, it appears in the report. Um, and I think the key, and I don't wanna speak for the parking working group, but it, Christine said it nicely, this is where the money is generated. Um, 
the, the downtown is where the majority of the money is generated. And um, I think the, the parking working group felt that there were not just parking, but transportation improvements that could be made in the system. And this would be a way to ensure that those funds were used for, for those transportation improvements. Before I go to others, it remind me, do we have any meters outside of the downtown area? Yes. In North Amherst? Uh, Olympia Drive. Olympia Drive has meters, okay. And those are town meters? Is that the only location? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But there are villages that could be needing that in the future. Yeah. Dorothy. I, I am a little confused by something you said about the North Common. Um, and I'm, I'm asking questions with no solutions being offered. That um, the effort to make a better entrance or look towards the town hall, which is something that I, I think is very important, is in conflict with the parking lot that provides money. So that, and people have said from the d downtown bi business, business district that they can't, that those parking spots are necessary for their customers. I don't have a solution, but I know that the Spring Street situation of no parking has made it worse. Somehow, if we're gonna reduce parking in that lot, um, which would then take away some of the money you were planning to use on the paths on the North Green, which would grow bigger because it would take over part of that lot. Some other parking has to be provided somewhere near downtown in that area. I, I don't know where, but um, we, I, I just see us doing things at, at odds all over the place, um, allowing no parking to be provided by Spring Street, but then wanting to close down a lot, which provides money, which would then be used for walking, and it, it goes in a circle that's not working. So uh, that's why I do want somebody in charge of the whole thing, to, to look at all the aspects and try to come up with a system. But I mean, I keep thinking, is there, can there be underground parking under the, under the, the North Common? I mean, seriously, what are we gonna do? If you have enough money, you can build anything. But I think if you looked at the cost of underground parking garage, you'd, we have a lot of capital projects we probably need to yeah. do before that one. Yeah. I'm just but saying it, that you'd be getting rid of revenue. It, it, you, you might have outlined why priority number one from the working group was priority number one. <laughs> Pat. Yeah, I'm w uh, wondering if we had uh, a dedicated parking district downtown, uh, what responsibility would the business community have um, for f helping to um, support customers and residents? Um, I know, um, I spoke to the bid director quite a while ago and she talked about not wanting to have to validate parking and things like that. But if we're dedicating an area or dedicating funds to the small businesses in town, which is a good idea, what responsibilities do you see them having? Like validation, val uh, providing a van from a parking area or things like that. I'm not sure what you mean by dedicating funds to small businesses. Well, the downtown parking situation basically focuses on small businesses in town. No, no there are a number of residents. Is that a misconception on my down, part? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that it's also the people who go to public meetings in the evenings. It's um, people who come to work here every day. I mean, I, I think that there are a number of nonprofits that are um, Boys and Girls Club, uh, brother, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So I don't think that saying that this is only gonna improve the situation for businesses, I would disagree with that statement. But I, I do think that this is a community-wide issue and we all need to um, do what we can to, to improve it because I think that the businesses recognize that um, the way the current parking system works or doesn't work affects their bottom line. And so um, I think that they wanna be part of the solution and perhaps validation isn't how they want to be part of the solution, but um, you know, those are conversations that Christine can attest. We, we, uh, the, we the downtown parking working group has tried uh, to, to have those conversations about employee parking and how, how else, how businesses can help the situation as well. So we've certainly reached out to them and, and tried to work with them on that. Thank you for the clarification. I'd just like to add, and having that parking manager 
they're more of a liaison between us you have to get buy in from the businesses of course they're busy people they're trying to make money and you know validating is just one more thing they have to do but there could be lots of things like special event parking for certain days when it's you know like a lot going on on the commons a beautiful day there's a lot more people down there there could be valet you know cards or valet parking and there could be all different kinds of and just where the employees park all of that and it takes time and they need to feel like they can it's a compromise and they can buy into it and not just that they're being told oh this is what you have to do that rigidity of a parking system so but I think that will come you know come in time I think there's been a real lack of communication and there's been distrust that's built up um, I think they want easier parking for their customers, and part of that um, <clears throat> goes into the other point of signage and web um, information. I think when there's more communication and it's more clear and pe different ways people can get the information they need to figure out where they're parking, whether it's through Park Mobile or through online maps or just looking at a paper map or just their habits that they make. Um, even you know addressing the whole different options of how to park whether the students are here or not it's completely different parking in July than it is in September and I think everybody knows that but it's not clear in the information we provide so I think as that improves I think that will improve um, the feelings from the business community and then hopefully there'll be more communication and, and people can work together and one of the things that I think um, to further illustrate the point is, is the <laughs> shared parking <laughs> agreement. You know, the, yeah. the cinema and the Bank of America have a private to private the agreement. Point. When the bank is closed, uh, cinema patrons are allowed to park in the Bank of America a lot. How do we explore how other, you know, either to increase the public supply at certain hours of the day or to allow pe businesses to have parking in other businesses' lots that maybe are, are underutilized? Um, I think is another way to explore how, how the business community can, can help solve the, the issue. Do we have any other questions on sort of the interrelationship between a proposed parking benefit district and our current transportation fund? Andy. I guess I'm still at a loss as to what in the end the difference is in real terms because you still have a discrete fund in which um, money goes from parking revenues and expenses go out for transportation purposes that can, can include buses that um, serve the downtown area. Most of our bus service does go through downtown because of the nature of how our town is laid out. So I'm still um, not seeing what the difference is in going to this new structure from the structure we have? I wouldn't look at it as a structure. I think it's whatever you want it to be, and it needs to be. So the transportation fund exists in a certain way, and yes, it does cater to the whole town, and, I, and parking benefits uh, districts in their nature traditionally are one focused area. Maybe you could look at it as can a certain percentage of the transportation fund just be dedicated to downtown and downtown efforts of transportation or that beautification tie-in. Um, so why the consultant brings this up is because certain towns had none of this kind of fund. So this is what was the first level created. You do a parking benefits group. But if you look at them in cities, I mean a city, it's the whole city. So it's just what you're focused on. So you could have transportation taken out of it and then just dedicate one certain percent to parking. So it's, I think this is a, you're more of a finance committee person. I mean, this is something, it's a budget creation is all it is. I don't think there's any set rule or guideline to uh, that it has to be town or downtown or you have to set firm lines and overlay or anything like that. It's just. I'm looking at it more as there's needs that need to be taken care of and how do you pay for them. Okay, there's some money there, but it's already being delegated to other things, so choices have to be made and things have to be shifted. Yeah, um, I think what I'm gonna recommend to, our, to my committee members is that 
we asked Sonia Aldrich to come in at some point because she's the one who really understands what goes in and out of the fund and can answer some of the questions that are really being raised here. When I look at the um, budget uh, book, page 169, and where it lists the revenues for the transportation fund, um, I would say all of those revenues come from the central business district because they're parking violations. Well, you don't get parking violations unless you're ticketing and there probably are not many that happen in neighborhoods, very small number. Uh, parking fines, parking, uh, the registry uh, fees that go with the fines, the meter fees, uh, permit fees, garage reserve fees, I and mean, it's, it's kind of all, all of the categories seem to be tying to the central business district, which is why I asked the prior question. I just didn't see where either on the revenue side or the expense side that it was uh, gaining us anything, that it wasn't losing us anything either. It was just a matter of going from one structure to another, which is why I was trying to understand it from a structural point of view. It, if I could just add another thing, which is the public perception of paying for parking. Mm -hmm. Right now, you put your money in the meter or you use the app or the kiosk, um, and it, it, as a resident, you have no idea what those funds are being used for, um, especially if, um, let's say, you're, you're parking in, in a lot that may, it maybe isn't well lit or um, doesn't feel comfortable or, or um, isn't well paved. You know, and, and so I think that one of the things that other communities have done with, with parking benefits district, and again, it doesn't have to be with the parking benefits district, it can be through the transportation fund, but is to notify people when they pay, this is what your money is being used for. It's used for the beautification of downtown, it's used for paving this, it's used for you know, the, the nice lighting in the evenings and, and the wayfinding signage so that it's easier. And so I think that um, it, it makes people less, uh, are more willing to, I don't know, more willing to pay for, but more <laughs> happier about it, less, less <laughs> unhappy, <laughs> right? Um, you know, so tying <laughs> tying what what they're paying for for seeing tangible benefits from it is is also a nice feature that uh, we didn't get to discuss. So I just okay. wanted to add that. We ready to talk about signage? Yes. I think you have to hold yours down. I forgot about that. Um, I just wanted to mention that, um, and maybe you and I can work with Lynn and Paul on this. I feel as though, you know, we, we really kind of, pun intended, parked the North Common project. And so the council really hasn't gotten a full presentation on the, on the North Common project. And it, it comes up from time to time like it did this morning. And, um, I'm always kind of hesitant to jump in, but want to put a hit the pause button and say, let's keep it parked a little bit. Um, but I, I do think the council needs some sort of overview of that project. In the end, the final design for the North Common, and there were months and months of design charrettes and public meetings, um, the net loss of parking was actually 11 spaces. And I put a little asterisk on that because um, our design was, was uh, minus 11, but we thought that with some redesign of parking around the common, we could actually pick up those 11 spaces. So there is kind of this perception out there that that design lost a whole bunch of, of downtown parking, and it really didn't. So I think you and I can yeah. um, perhaps talk with the, the president and, and uh, you know, with Lynn and, and Paul about that. So. Sorry, maybe a better example would have been Kendrick Park and paths through through Kendrick in, in the... Well, no, it's interesting you brought that up, Jeff, because I think the design of, of um, the North Common did... We, we clearly distinguish between the parking lot using transportation fund for the parking lot, but not for the improvements to the common. You kind of suggested a, a more creative approach to using transportation funds for sidewalks and other uses, and I think that's where 
having Sonia come in and talk to us about that might be instructive. So signage. So some of the questions we had were what's, you know, there's wayfinding signs sort of in progress. We've got some sort of design going on. Um, where's sort of what's the status of that? But um, one of the things that I have written down on what we'd like to have is what is it? Is it benefit? Is signage beneficially done piecemeal? And so I think that's you know an update of where we are with signage. What what's in plan? What that would do? Is that sort of meeting goal number three or? priority number three, which was high visibility and consistent signage in key locations and update the parking webpage to be more user friendly. Is the current sort of status and plan for wayfinding, does that fit into this priority number three or is it kind of separate and could you do priority number three piecemeal and still be beneficial or would you have to do it all at once? I don't know whether you guys can answer those questions at all, but. <laughs> well, I think there's lots of pieces to it, there's wayfinding downtown, there's the actual signage for lots. We have lots that we don't even all agree on what it's called. Going back to your lot, you know, is it the Main Street lot, the Town Common lot, Town Hall lot, and, it, and it's inconsistent all over the place. So, you know, that needs to be determined and signage for that. Um, meter signage, how to pay. Um, and don't forget, we do have neighborhoods around town that, like my own neighborhood, which is north of campus, is a no parking Monday through Friday, eight to five, um, at which violations do occur and money is earned from that, so they are technically part of the parking system. And the signs on the street, most of them have been there since the 50s, so they're hard to read. So my point is that could be a whole project just in itself, like here's a neighborhood, it needs new signage. So I think there's more signage needs than, and I don't want to get into the weeds too much, but I think it, it's not piecemeal, I think it's projects, there's different phases and different sectors, and I think for the most part, all of the signage needs to be redone. Dorothy. Okay, one of the things that excited me when I went to the, um, um, the parking study meetings, was a, an area of technology which I am not going to be using, but which I think everybody else will be, which is um, using the, the, your, your phone and a parking app and maps. So when you talk about signs, one of the things he said was that um, there's, there's no consistency. I mean, I'd hate to see a bunch of lovely real signs made out of materials put around that are not matching in names to the whole little, um, world on your phone. So yeah. they have to be done together. And that's how people will park, um, I think, in the future. So it's a really comprehensive and difficult thing. I just, so I don't want a committee making signs if it's not coordinating with the, with the app. So if I could just yep. e Jeff, e sure. echo a couple of things that Christine said and put a finer point on it. I see two major, for the signage, two major things. One is lots. Um, aside from the Main Street lot and the Spring Street lot, you can't really see the lots from any major public way in town. You can't see what we're calling the Pleasant Street lot, which is the CVS lot, uh, the town-owned portion of the CVS lot. You can't see Boltwood. Um, I was driving into work this morning and we have two signs towards the, the um, Pleasant Street lot is it Pleasant or Prospect? See, I don't even know. I, <laughs> I don't know where you are. CVS uh, lot, even though it's. It, <laughs> you know, around, around the little alleyway, and okay. they're okay. probably, you know, two or three feet tall, and they're, I'd say, five years old now, and they're starting to get a little faded. I don't think there's anything coming north on Pleasant Street um, on, the, on the right side to tell you to take that left. Um, and I think Boltwood, we have a, a larger sign. They're, Banners, though they're not they're not metallic. I don't I don't know how they look at night if they're reflective. So I think that for visitors, it's really hard to find parking um, in Amherst, and especially when when those two lots, sort of by the common, are full, that people don't know where to go. So I think that's one of. And then the other um, 
complaint that we have heard about the system is I have to literally get out of my car to check the park mobile zone to, and then to get, and if it's cold or if it's raining, you know, I'm already out of my car, I have to go to the kiosk or I have to go to the meter head, I might as well put a coin in the meter or the kiosk. Um, so I think that's the other thing. And those can be taken absolutely distinctly and one after the other. Um, but I think those two things are just sort of, in my mind, and I have not done the research for how expensive it is, but I think it's short dollars for a big gain, making it really much more convenient for people to at least go, oh, there's a parking lot back there, let me check it out. Um, so that's kind of where, where I would focus. And then the website is just, hey, we have free parking the next three, I think it's three Saturdays now. Um, how do we promote that better? It, yes, it's a splashed on the front of the web page as well, but you know, do we do some, I think the bid does it, the chamber does it, how do we also get other businesses um, to let people know? So I, I think that uh, being more clear on the website, and I think we also have a lot of disparate web pages, like the, the senior parking permit is over here, and maybe it, it's not, you know, um, to Dorothy's point about making sure that everything is consistent, I think we call the locks different things on different pages, and so just making sure, and again, this is who is responsible for making sure that the web page, you know, maybe the senior center deals with the senior permit on their website, and the, um, planners or, or myself deal with the other parking pages or the collector's office. And so having somebody whose responsibility it is to say, oh, let's make sure that all these places are talking about lots in the same way or have the correct uh, price or hours of enforcement or maps, um, I think is, is important so that people don't get confused and, and frustrated. Because the other thing we learned if we didn't know that parking is a very emotional um, experience <laughs> for a lot of people. Andy. Yeah, I just have one other uh, point to make because I know we need to draw this to a close and just to pick up on something, Christine, that you said earlier. I really agree that the parking system and the transportation system as a whole are very strongly linked and the fact that the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee has not delved into parking sort of uh, separates the two out a little bit. Um, one example that I've often thought about and that Jeff uh, mentioned in his comments was um, how few people know about the uh, whatever lot we want to call it, so call it the CBS lot for ease. Um, it is in the course of the complaints of the cinema about their patrons not being able to easily get parking. It has always struck me that if the Transportation Advisory Committee would consider reversing the direction of the one way on North Prospect and Halleck Streets, that it would enable us to have a big parking um, this way sign that goes pretty much from where the cinema is in the library north towards that lot, and that lot would become a lot more visible just because of that reversal. But um, that's both the combination of transportation and parking issues, so I really appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, Steve. So first an anecdote. So during the snow emergency, I was reading one of the notices and said that the places you can park and uh, the lower level of the garage, and then it said the North Pleasant <laughs> parking lot, the rows closest to the church. So first I had to think, figure out where's the difference between North Pleasant and East Pleasant? So I figured that out. Not that I would, <laughs> but the other thing I was going to say is that um, I don't know if this has come up, but so my daughter lives in a town in New Hampshire that as you go into the town, they have signs up. It's like going into an airport, you know, short term parking, you know, two hour parking, take a left, four hour parking, take a right, long term parking, take two rights or whatever. And I've always found that, you know, sort of incredibly useful, but we don't have anything like that coming into the core, do we? But that might be. But yeah. and, and so many things are changing, like the app is more and more people use that. Um, in the cities already, it will actually tell you where there's open spots. Yeah. So, you know, over the next five years, this is all gonna change and improve. But wouldn't it be great if Amherst was poised to take advantage of these technologies and, and lessons learned from other communities and make the parking better and easier to find? 
Well, I think we're going to close this discussion because we have some others to do. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I wrote on my for next meeting that we'll, as a committee, discuss what we would want in the report back to the town council report. Um, so we'll continue this. This is not the end of it. You guys are welcome to come, but um, it'll be, I think, a, more of a discussion in or amongst the committee itself um, next time. Christine, I would hope you might be able to stay for the next part of our meeting um, as putting on your other hat, your planning board chair hat. Um, but before I actually move to that, I did promise public comment on this portion of the meeting. Is there any public comment? I'm seeing a shake of the head from the one public in here. So we will not take public. Yep. I just had one, one thing to add. To, to <laughs> plug the, um, man, the parking person again. Just, I never got back to Andy. In the report, the consultant's report, in one of the appendices in the back, there is a job description. Yes. And it's, um, it's for Charlottesville, um, Virginia. But if you all look at the actual, um, the duties, it's, you know, the, it's pretty much what we would be looking for. Okay. So that might help when you're trying to parameterize, is this part-time or full-time? Go back and look at that and it will help you go, oh yeah. Thank you so much. So thank, thank you, you. Jeff. Thank um, you. I think we have a copy. I, I know we have a big copy, but just, just that one page. Yeah. I think we can print that out. Yeah. I think it's a separate appendix, so I think we've got a, it's in the packet for today. Yeah. Um, so the next item on our agenda, and this is why I asked Christine, she might be interested in this one as planning board chair, is um, the master plan continued discussion and possible vote on a process for updating and adopting in accordance with the charter that was referred to us on November 18. Um, I drafted and in our packets today, in at the request of everyone, I drafted a memo to you guys, um, to the CRC, um, that has a recommendation on the process for updating and adopting the master plan. And what I will do is quickly go through that um, sort of seven step process. So the people in the audience can hear what that is. The memo should be online, as far as I know, um, but, but I will go through it, not read the whole thing. Um, the, process would, the process that I am proposing is that the first one is the council delay adopting the master plan until after it is updated. It's sort of where we sort of got to last meeting. And the second item would then be that the council requests the town manager and the planning board per sec charter section 9.8C to review the master plan to determine revisions, amendments, and additions necessary and obvious that are necessary and obvious and that the planning board attempt to propose those revisions and vote to approve them within six months. Um, then there's a whole description of what that kind of means, what we were thinking that means to help the council understand potentially what that means, but also the planning board, and since we've got the planning board chair here, I'll summarize some of it. Necessary and obvious, we're, that is not a you have to do things or this is what you're doing. It's a very general item um, that we would ask that the planning board hold at least one working session in accordance with the charter, um, but um, we would not expect the public process to be as extensive as the process that, that led to the original 2010 master plan, um, that necessary and obvious is that we say, we've heard the staff has been compiling potential options for that, but we're recognizing that it's entirely within the planning board's purview to determine what those would be and what changes they would want to see um, since the master plan sits with them. Our thought, thinking of what necessary and obvious means um, would be revisions to reflect the change in the form of government. So if it's talking about select board, we should probably update that since we don't have a select board anymore. Um, the town adoption of plans, as Christine actually mentioned in our earlier discussion, we now have a transportation plan. Uh, maybe we can incorporate some of those new plans into the master plan document. The adoption of plans initiative goals like the transportation plan climate Council climate action goals, flood mapping, updating that's in process now, open space recreation plan that have occurred in the last decade. Um, and changes in town priorities since the approval of the master plan is sort of what we're seeing as we discussed, necessary and obvious. Um, the third process, item of the process, 
Um, during the planning board's discussion, the town council requests that they regularly inform the CRC of its work um, with the planning board chair and CRC chair deciding how best to accomplish that request. So that was my, I don't know what it's gonna look like, but <laughs> maybe we can figure something out as this process goes forward. Um, and then it would be CRC's job through reports to the council to keep the council informed on the progress. So it would, it would go that way. Um, the fourth item in this process that I propose is once the planning board approves the updated master plan, they submit to the town manager and then the town manager submits to the council. That's all in accordance with what the charter outlines. Um, so that's just following that charter process. And then the fifth one is once the council receives the updated and approved master plan, they hold a public hearing, which is also in accordance with the charter, and then they refer it to the CRC. And then after the public hearing, CRC reviews it in accordance with its charge, um, determines whether to recommend adoption, and it accomplishes that review within 45 days, preferably sooner. And then the last item is upon recommendation of CRC, council votes to adopt with or without amendments per, again, the charter. So that's sort of the process I came up with based on our discussion two weeks ago. Um, obviously, we're here to discuss what that looks like. We do have the planning board chair here, um, so I'm hoping she's willing to. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you've seen this document. I think I had it requested, sent to the whole planning board as a draft, which I put in this document. I'm hoping it got to you. Um, and so if we could, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts too before we adopt something. Um, and at this time, I'll also mention that the planning board has asked myself as chair to show up to the December 18th planning board meeting. Um, and I have agreed to do that sort of for a similar discussion, going the other direction, us, us in front. Um, and so we'll discuss whether it's just me or whether we wanna call a full CRC meeting that night too, if others are interested after we go through this, this meeting. But um, yeah, we're starting to figure out how to work together. Um, so thoughts from the council and then maybe we can hear from Christine too. Yes, Dorothy. Um, what about necessary, obvious, and desirable? Because I, I don't think we're just going through and cutting out select board and putting in town council. Um, there, there has been some movement to that there were some areas where we wanted a few more changes. And I suppose you could kind of say that under changing town priorities, you, it was kind of like vaguely referred to, but I, I just don't want to have this thing be just changing a few words of language to reflect the change of government and being in in consonance with the master plan, I mean, not with the charter. Andy and then Steve. Well, actually, Steve then Andy, because Steve, I know, has to leave soon. Um, so let me just say that I like the plan that um, Mandy Joe has laid out, and I, I do think it's a fine line to figure out what's, you know, sort of necessary and obvious or whatever the wording is. Um, I get a little, just because I'm following up on Dorothy, but I get a little hesitant about desirable because desirable becomes basically everything. And so I'm not sure that there are parts, I mean, there might be parts to it that are so obviously off that we can, that those can be fixed, but I would hesitate to get too much into the kind of the qualitative aspects of it. But even the review where we're looking at the select board um, and I haven't studied those, but it becomes almost like the bylaw review. So, the, so do we mean select board as the executive body? Do we mean select board as the legislative representatives of the legislative body? But I think that that's a very worthwhile, ex I would support that exercise. And um, the, you know, the qualitative part I am hesitant about. Andy. Yeah, I, I'm glad you uh, recognized Steve first because uh, he raised some of the points that I was going to raise and uh, I think that the term needs to be, whatever we use needs to be understood very clearly because uh, the questions like um, doing something with uh, climate action and trying to incorporate climate action better into the plan maybe more than just necessary and obvious because it involves judgment and uh, 
as to what exactly it is that you're putting into it, as opposed to what we did with the bylaws of just trying to change wordings and make the select board disappear forever, which I feel it has already. But um, anyway, uh, that that's uh, one, um, just generally on that comment. I um, am, I really appreciate your work, Mandy. I think that it is a tremendous effort. I have some suggestions to a number of different areas, but um, as far as the bigger construct, I agree, and um, I can go through whenever you think it's appropriate for other thoughts that I have on specific sections. Let's hold off on that till later in this discussion. Pat. Um, I'm working on the bylaw review committee, and the initial charge was to look, you know, remove select board and make those kinds of transitional, obvious changes. But as we worked with the document and we worked with the bylaws, we found things that we wanted to change, and we kept, we documented that. And so when the council gets the report, there's going to be, we think we need to look at these. And I, that's what I assume and trust that the planning board would be doing so that. We're, the document is a living document um, and really puts forward the thinking of the planning board at that time. Um, I, I like what you've done, Mandy Jo, and I ha think we need to be careful of words like desirable because we might not all agree on what's desirable. Thank you. Christine, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on this as planning board chair? I like the memo very much. You've I think you've nailed, you know, we're trying to funnel down and get a specific framework how we're going to improve this and update this document. Um, it's been in the planning board's packet for this week. We have a meeting tonight um, at 7 o'clock, so we'll be talking about that and preparing. I am unsure, I, I'll check with the director of planning, Chris Bestrup, whether I know there is, the town staff has been compiling a list of potential revisions. Um, and I do, we have not actually seen those yet, so that will be helpful. I'm hoping that some of the suggestions that have come from your group and other groups will be compiled within that. And it is my assumption that we will be going through that as the members so that we're ready for the 18th when you come so that we can really start nailing down a plan um, and uh, a scope of um, how wide or not it's going to go. I think necessary and obvious, even that can be subjective, even more than desirable. I think part of it is justifiable, and that's, I liked your last paragraph on the first page where you actually pull out different reports and plans, and I think that's the first way to look at it, is what has changed mm -hmm. um, by actual guidelines, decrees, or ordinances, whatever um, goals that the town has taken on. Obviously, the climate and sustainability is a big one. Um, and again, then it's going to be with the planning board trying to figure out at that point, okay, how long does this need to take? And, and again, Chris Bestrup would be a key person in this. Are they doing it as staff in-house? Do they have to hire a consultant, you know, or, or for parts of it? What, you know, I think then there's a time, a firm timeline. I do like your suggestion of six months. I hope it's six months from when it actually starts and not from now. Um, <laughs> But that could be firmed up, and there would actually be an actual work timeline. So yeah. hopefully by January, we could really nail this all down and get going. So I'll, I'll clarify the six months. The six months would not be from the day of this memo. It Thank would God. be from <laughs> the time the council, because we have to actually, we would send <laughs> some subset of this memo, is sort of my thinking, to the council. It would go on a council agenda. And then presumably six months from when the council does number two, the council requests the manager. <laughs> so that would probably be at this rate sometime in January, given our council meeting schedule. So no, not from today or from <laughs> whenever this was written, November 22nd. <laughs> that, that's my, that six month would be from when the council says, yes, we, re we take CRC's recommendation. And do you think that timeline might be? It, it might be. I mean, it, what, what I think is the scope of work right now, I think. But it, like I said, I'm not the one who's going to have to actually go and do the actual work. So that's where Chris Bestrup would be critical in, yeah. in how she plans on getting it done. 
but I think we all know that we don't want this to drag out for a long time and become a bigger effort. We don't want to rewrite the master plan. There's, there's so many other initiatives. We've got uh, bylaws and zoning that needs to be changed too. So the planning board is considering its own workload for the, for the next year. Yeah. So what do we, as a council committee right now, want to do with this memo and Andy said he's got some recommended changes that we can discuss um, I didn't when I was writing this I obviously addressed it to the, the committee um, so I don't foresee this being the memo necessarily we vote on even though I said possible vote um, I, I foresee the process sort of the second set of numbers the chair proposes the following process that that's the section we kind of say that's the process we're recommending the council adopt that's what we're forwarding on to the council not the memo as a whole um, do we believe we're ready now do we want to wait until um, the planning board discusses it too because they may at tonight's meeting have recommendations for us that i i think i'd be very interested to hear. Um, I don't know about the rest of the committee, but um, do we want to wait till the 18th when I've been invited to go? Do we want to attempt to maybe include everyone? I'd, I'd have to ask the planning board if they'd want the five of us there um, to potentially, if people are willing to, create a CRC meeting that night too. Um, wh what does our committee see as the next step in this process and getting it to the council? Steve. Yeah. So my apologies, because I do have to go, but um, for what it's worth, I support, because we're only advisory to the town council, I would support a version of your memo to go to the town council as, you, you know, a description of our proposed process. Pat looks like she wants to say something. Not really. but. Um, I agree with Steve, and I would like to hear some of what Andy is thinking. Right, Andy. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this fairly quickly because I don't wanna delve into discussion in great depth, but I'll give you some examples of things that I thought about. Um, at the, in point two, in the last paragraph, um, the first uh, of the point two, uh, there's a lot in there that um, ties to other committees, and I think that we at least have to give some consideration, for example, on climate action, whether there should be some explicit reference to um, when um, ECAC is consulted or for the open space and recreation plan, at what point the LSSC commission might be consulted, so that's one, and I can give you a copy of this uh, so that, uh, mm -hmm. to Andy. Uh, when we talk about what um, things, uh, what, what documents have been developed since the uh, last uh, master plan, they're really quite extensive. We know it just from housing, with the housing market study and the housing production plan, those are fairly significant. Do we make reference to them as a uh, updating without, uh, you know, is this updating uh, without changing? And if so, is that part of an update? That's a judgment call that somebody's got to make. Um, going down to then just quickly on point six and seven. Um, on point six, uh, I would have said uh, 45 days of referral, but preferably sooner. I would take out but preferably sooner and say unless extended by the council because I think that that still hammers the 45 days but gives the process a little bit more clarity. The last one um, is that we do have uh, something that we have to really work out with the planning board which is why I'm glad the planning board chair is um, still here for this comment and that is that the charter has it set up, as you point out, 9.8B, that the council gets the recommendation which it can adopt with or without um, amendments. And um, that, that seems sort of um, difficult because I, 
um, having the council amend it without consulting and having a process involving the planning board um, seems that it was uh, something that we need to clarify. I put in, uh, just wrote down as I was reading this, um, a possible sentence, which was if amendments are proposed by the council, a final vote will not take place until the earlier of 30 days thereafter or vote of the planning board to recommend the proposed amendment. Um, I would uh, want to um, at least have some dialogue about whether that sort of a provision that says if the uh, council decides at the last stage that it wants to consider an amendment that it give a pause to allow the planning board to have a dialogue about it. I see a nod from Pat with a, that makes sense. I see a very big nod from Christine <laughs> saying that makes sense. Yeah, and, you know, having been on the Charter Commission, I, we put that in there, and then when I was writing this theory in writing a document that says other people will have to apply and, and abide by it, then trying to abide by it, you're like, well, it has to go by the planning board. If we amend it, kind of has to go back. And so I, I also would nod and say some sort of addition to that sentence that says if the town council's going to put amendments in, we kind of redo this process almost. You know, if before we vote, it goes back to the planning board for approval of those amendments or disapproval of those amendments, I guess you could have competing master plans, one that the planning board's approved and one that the council's adopted, and that would be strange, but um, you technically under the charter, I guess, could. Um, but yeah, I, I think we need to then, based on that, I, I think Dorothy was also nodding, that makes sense, right? We'll, we'll work on a sentence like that. Um, do I hear sort of a consensus that we want to hear what the planning board thinks of this proposal before we would take any vote? Yeah? Um, okay. Christine? We'll be looking at it tonight, so yeah. we could get back to you in a couple of days, I'm sure, with yeah. a memo of what our thoughts are. That sounds good. So I'll stick this on next time's agenda, too. Um, and maybe I'll come up with an actual document we could vote on that would get forwarded instead of just this memo. memo. Um, come up with, pull those seven or eight, seven items out as the sort of memo that we'd forward on to the town council. Um, while I've got you here, that, that takes us through our talking about this memo, which brings us to the December 18th planning board meeting attendance. I was requested to be there as chair of this committee. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the planning board intends as the scope of that discussion, so I, I haven't explored it yet. We had the Thanksgiving holiday, but, but one of the questions I would have for the planning board is, is um, more than just me welcome? Is this something that if the entire CRC or multiple members want to be there for a discussion, um, could could that happen? And is that something that the planning board would welcome or not? Because um, I don't know what your intention for the scope of this discussion is, so. Of course, you're all welcome to come. Everyone's welcome to come. But uh, I, we can, I can get back to you um, again after tonight's meeting. Let, I want to hear from Chris Bestrup and where they're at with their lists. You know, it looks like there's kind of two lists, the list of uh, potential revisions that they've known, you know, that they've been collecting, but also the list of all the documents and plans and guidelines that have gone through since that time over the last, like, nine years. Um, you know, like it says here, adoption of plans. Well, that's, co you know, like complete streets plan, right? That obviously would affect a master plan, that kind of methodology and thought. So um, let me see where she's at that and if she can have all that ready. If everything can be ready and disseminated to all of us by the 18th, then maybe it would be really great to have a dialogue to start nailing down scope and that kind of thing. So um, I'll let you know after okay. tonight. Okay. And and the, the intent of that discussion right now is sort of to discuss more of what the revisions would entail, like sort of what sections, or is it just process similar to what this memo is? On the 18th, I would hope that Chris Bestrup, who again is responsible for actually doing the work, 
she will have a better idea of whether it's her staff that will be doing it, um, whether she'll have a new person on board, when you know she's looking to, she's missing a person right now, um, whether she needs to get a consultant, what have you. But she would have a better idea of um, scope and how long it's going to take. So I, I really want to get her feedback. I think it, that's like the critical link right now. Who's going to do it? and what kind of comprehensive list is going right now. So she might be able to be ready on the 18th to articulate that, and it would make sense to do it to the planning board and to CRC at the same time to get everybody on the same page. Okay. But maybe she needs till January, I don't know. So I will get back to you. Yeah, let's, let's keep in touch day. with that. Or um, Chris will, yeah. she might reach out to you. Our, the planning board meeting is at 7 p.m. Seven, on yes. the 18th, we have a meeting scheduled for the morning. I intend to hold that meeting in the morning, even if we hold an evening meeting too. Our, do we have a quorum available if that is what the planning board wants for attending a 7 p.m. meeting on the 18th? It, it looks like I see a nod that we would have a quorum, so if, if that is what the planning board is thinking, I will notice it also as a CRC meeting, but I'm going to go with the guidance from the planning board on, since it is their meeting, um, on what they want. Um, but we will still have a meeting in the morning probably to deal with other stuff. I will look at our council schedule to see whether, um, if we could somehow figure out a way to potentially, depending on what that meeting looks like, vote on the council thing after that meeting, um, but still be able to get it on the council agenda for the first meeting in January, if we have space for the first meeting in January, because I don't think neither board I'm hearing wants to hold it up much longer than January at this point. Um, so we'll, we'll see, I'll, I'll work with the president and all and figure out when we would be able to put it on this meeting for that, but I know we have a lot of stuff on our CRC agenda and more keeps coming. So yes, Christine. Also try to nail down when on the 18th. I know we already have stuff packed in there, probably some hearings. Um, so it might be closer to like eight o'clock okay. or something for you all, but I will try to get a specific time. Okay. So I will we'll touch base then yeah. <laughs> together. Um, I, a public comment is over, but I am seeing a hand from another member of the planning board that is in the audience. So um, come on up, Janet. And um, at our last planning board meeting, we heard that the CRC is also going to be asking the planning board to start on a kind of complete overhaul of the zoning bylaw. Is that where did I mean, or that that discussion has been taking place? And I was wondering for some clarification about. If that's also the ask for the following the coming year and who's asking so that was part of a referral to this committee from the the council um, I as chair of this committee am trying to get the master plan section off our plate and to you guys um, and get that process settled and and set you know sort of set down which sounds like we might be able to do by January with where Christine as chair of planning board is and where you guys planning chair planning board are on what that might look like. Once that's done, I will put the zoning process and probably will probably follow a very similar method from our point of view of proposing a process for that, working with the chair. So, so that's gonna be simultaneous, like working on both at the same time or concurrently? We're one not another? totally sure yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, Christine. <laughs> So uh, Ms. McGowan doesn't know this, but I've met with uh, Chris Vestrup and Rob Morrow, and they're working together, trying to kind of similar to what you're saying here, define the scope and just figure out what this is going to entail. Is it yeah. and, and what level is it? Because there's um, scope of what? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Of the changes to the bylaw that the zoning has not bylaw. been yeah. determined at all. Um, Rob Morrow has a lot of little fixes that he would like that um, impact his world. Chris has a list of things that she knows she would like. Um, and then of course, it could expand and there's lots of things to change, but I think it's about scope. Again, how big, how long, how fast. I know this, they would like to have something redone within a year. Um, so I would assume that's sort of like a little overlap, but mostly after the master plan. Um, so that's coming from Christine Brestrup and Rob Morrow, not from the council. 
No, I'm just trying to clarify who's saying what. Who's, they would do the work, so yeah. they're just trying to figure out different levels if we ch had to do this much, if we had to do more, um, and try not to do everything. They have to figure out resources. So they have to figure out the biggest thing is, do they have the staff? And how much could the staff take on? Because they already know how busy their staff is and what kind of available time they will have at least over the next six months. Or, you know, when Chris is also putting in this master plan mm -hmm. thing. So yep. then it also comes to, do you have to hire a consultant or get some extra help or source out, which they would then have to also, you know, that the council has to get involved in that because there'd be funds or the town manager, are there funds available? So they're just trying to figure out you know, there's this request floating around, there's a desire to clean up and fix the bylaws um, and to what level that's gonna happen. That's still to be determined because you all would weigh in on that yeah. and other groups. I'm, I'm sure the planning board would weigh in a bit on that. Um, they're just trying to figure out resources. I don't know if the assistant town manager can well, I'll, explain I'll add it better it, than me. I'll add to it from the CRC point of view as chair. Um, that that was also part of this referral. I don't have the language for that part directly in front of me right now. Um, and so what the council and this committee needs to, was tasked with is again coming up with a process. Um, but the process is more um, not potentially exactly what amendments we wanna see and saying work on that. It might include some of that, uh, but as you've heard from Councillors, when we were discussing parking and even the master plan, um, desirable and what we want, there's probably 13 different opinions. Um, so there might not be a, a list from the council coming forward with this is what we want or this, but okay, we might I'm be sorry, able to agree list, with something. A list, a list of, of changes to the zoning bylaw that okay. says we want you guys to work on this. There may or there may not be because we may not have the same desires. Um, but the, the concern and what we as CRC really need to figure out is how we will work with the planning board when those changes start discussion in the planning board, whatever, whatever changes, because the council has voted, the council now must hold a hearing on all zoning bylaw changes, um, which is different than the previous government where only the planning board held a hearing. In, in this form of government, both the planning board and the council must hold public hearings, and the council has voted to recommend that those hearings be held jointly at the same time so we're not holding two separate ones on two separate days. So, and they've also recommended that those hearings be held in this committee instead of at the full council. And so one of the things that this process we have to work out and work with the planning board with is how are we going to do that? I think my guess would be that this committee wants some idea of what those changes are before it goes into those hearings instead of just after um, or at the day of the hearing. So it's more what's, what's referred to this committee right now on zoning is, simil it is the process for getting through making changes to the zoning bylaw, not exactly what those changes will be. Um, so, so I understand you're talking about like when there's a proposed zoning change, but is the council asking the planning board to do a revision overhaul of the zoning bylaw? And I, I, I would, if, it, if the answer is yes, I would say um, I think it would be important to think about the master plan updating or revision and that as simultaneously and sort of saying, oh, let's do this in six months and let's do that in the following six months. I think that you should talk to the planning board about the whole load and how that would work. So, so it does, and that so the council has not asked for that yet. That does not mean it will not. It's so sitting in this committee to come up with not just the plan for when zoning changes happen, but potentially whether we want an extensive one and would recommend to the council for an extensive so one or not. No one on the council is asking for an overhaul of the zoning bylaw, or the CRC is not. So not yet. It, okay. We haven't had that discussion. It's part of what's been referred to us. Is there any talk in the town of doing that other than with Chris and Rob yes. Mora? Yes, there is. And who, who is that? Um, there has been with the president of the council, um, myself as chair of CRC, town manager. Um, the town manager, um, the planning department. Yeah. Um, so the, you, you th th those people see a need for that? Then? At recommendation of planning department, 
Yeah, but okay, so there, just, there's been no discussion as to what that overhaul would look, you know, exactly what would be changed. Does that make sense? So no specifics of this one would be changed to look like this. What would so which is why I can't yeah. get into specifics because so, it's just been, we've, we've heard from the planning department that there's a potential for a large amount of changes and maybe they can be done all at once. But the town council has not said that's exactly what we want yet. They referred to this committee to have that discussion within the council. Christine is working towards getting that discussion within the planning board. And then it's also a discussion between the two groups as we, in this new form of government, figure out how to work together because it is different than in the past. So I guess I would just say that as you look at the timeline for the master plan update or revision, that also we put that on the plate because yes. I think those things would affect each other very deeply because, and you know, just it's been hard to understand who's asking for this revision or why or what the big goals of that were. So yeah. just, just, that's all. Just, I can clarify a little. It's been asked for for years, um, but we haven't been in a place. The town hasn't logistically been in a place to be able to act on it. Um, you know, we had, you know, town meeting was ending and then we had elections and get you all on board and uh, you have lots to do. And so um, it has been years. So it's just finally coming up to speed and it does make total sense. You'd want to get, um, you want to update your master plan, tighten it up a little bit before you really come up with that final list of what zoning um, changes need to be done. And just as another background thing, it is um, a very common occurrence around the Commonwealth for uh, zoning bylaws to be updated this way. Very often towns do do uh, every like 20 year full suite cleanup because things change. All these initiatives we're talking about, every time there's a new plan that's adopted, this all brings on um, changes that aren't often tweaked and, and optimized in the zoning bylaw, so now could be a good time. We're looking at all this, we're all trying to come up to speed, and as much as we all love parking, we're gonna love zoning even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Um, any other questions about December 18 and all? Oh, Dave. So this was a great discussion. I think a lot of things were covered. Um, I just think maybe as we think about the agenda, Christine, for the planning board, the questions that Janet raised might be important to, to really have all the planning board here, um, kind of how is this going to roll out? And, and I think, Mandy, you referred to perhaps CRC working on a memo similar to the one for master plan for zoning. Yeah. Um, I will say that I've had a lot of conversations with my staff. Um, as as you mentioned, Christine, we are looking at how are we going to apply resources to both the master plan uh, update and um, potential zoning rewrite. And I think what I've heard for years and, and had some pretty um, in-depth conversation in the last six months with my staff, Christine and Rob in particular, is that there is really um, a strong feeling that we need to rewrite things Ex quite extensively in, in the bylaw. So um, having Rob Mora be uh, an integral part of that team makes perfect sense to us. Um, that's not always the case, having a building commissioner, but in fact, Rob is uh, very experienced uh, in zoning. Um, he has gone through a rewrite process in at least two other communities. So bringing his knowledge, expertise, and experience to this process makes Perfect sense. So uh, while I think Chris will be the, the uh, lead on the master plan, uh, working probably with Nate Malloy, it would be the team of our planning director and our building commissioner working with the planning board on whatever comes out of this discussion of, of bylaw um, revisions. Uh, and again, I think we'll hear more about that on the 18th, but I think it'd be good to do kind of master plan and and the zoning piece on the 18th, if we could have that discussion with the planning board. I think and, the and workload that's coming. And, and the word concurrent is kind of where we're at and how we, how we load that, both <laughs> recognizing the planning board's uh, bandwidth as well as staff, that'll be the key piece there. How do we do that? 
We do, uh, just to clarify, we do already have funding available for bringing in consultants for the zoning. Whether that's enough is a question we're looking at, um, but we'll definitely be bringing in some outside expertise depending on what is decided on the, on the zoning um, work. Any other comments? Dorothy? Well, I, I, I'm pleased to hear the um, clarification because it, it wasn't clear to me. Um, I, I think this would be very exciting, and I think that um, we can do it and have to do it, but it's going to be a really big job. Okay. So with that, thank you for being here. I, I appreciate you taking the time sure. to come to yet another meeting. Um, and See you again soon. Yes. Yes, and I think we're, as a committee, looking forward to working with the planning board on our co-charges. So that brings us to the 2020 CRC meeting schedule. I have put in the packet um, a draft meeting schedule based on the times the people said they, our committee members said they could be available. Um, obviously, this is based on the committee's makeup right now, and so I'm going to just put out there on video and for posterity that if the committee's makeup changes, whatever we adopt today could change uh, based on schedules changing, pe personnel changing, all sorts of things. But we would like to be able to put something out there. The, it is December. We don't have anything scheduled for January or beyond yet. And so for the public to be able to plan, at least until things happen, for us to be able to plan, we should adopt something. Um, so the only time that, uh, I think four individuals filled it out the last time I looked, and the only time that those four individuals highlighted together was 9 to 10.30 on Wednesday mornings. Um, with an in, 9 to 10.30 with an indication that one member who did not highlight the 8.30 to 9 period could show up at 8.30, but would really like to not, um, but could if necessary. Um, and so despite three of us going into a meeting schedule that will be 10.30 to noon, I did um, put in this schedule does propose the meetings on Wednesday mornings at 8.30 to 10.30 on the same days that the governance committee meets 10.30 to noon, which is a large hall for the three of us that do do consecutive meetings. Um, but it is what it is when that's the only time everyone can meet. Yes, Pat. But they can meet on the 15th, as which is what I wanted, and the opposite. The opposite. Um, one member of this committee said that that was not possible due to the work schedule, that it was much better That's to have right. them yeah. the same. And so for work schedules, That's right. That's yeah, so, so I apologize for the three members that will be doing four hours of meetings in a row every other week. Um, <laughs> but like I said, it is what it is. We're trying to get the work done. Um, we'll see what we can do about canceling some if we can catch up on our referrals and not have to meet with every other week, but thoughts on the schedule as proposed? Did I miss any holidays? Did I miss things like that, um, stuff like that? I know there are scheduled for two meetings throughout the summer. Again, as chair, I would hope that we might be able to cancel some of those if we can get caught up on work and figure out a way not to have to meet as frequently as possible. But it's better to put them in the schedule now and block out the time. Pat. Oh, no. Okay. Dorothy. Um, when is the retreat, the CRC retreat? We've set a date for, let me look it up. Um, it's, I think, the first Monday in February, but let me find it in a calendar. Um, I think, is that February 3rd? Yes, so, so our CRC hopes to hold a retreat on, the room is reserved, it is in this room at this point, February 3rd, which is a Monday night, 6.30 to 9.30 at this time is the scheduled time. Um, I will come up for the next meeting, I will have a proposed draft agenda for our December meeting, 
um, on what we might discuss at that meeting. Yes, now, Dorothy. This, this may not um, matter to you. It is the day of the Iowa caucus. And I know I would really kind of probably be home at my TV on that night. That's a big deal. We can do live updates while we're in the meeting and the retreat. How's that? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take regular updates, regular breaks to update the Iowa caucus oh, numbers. So, so if I don't hear any recommended, I guess, should we put the retreat date onto this calendar as a special meeting of the, yes. so I will add that retreat date onto the calendar. Thank you. Uh, and I'll put it as not a regular meeting, as a special meeting. With that one revision, do I hear a motion to adopt the 2020 uh, Community Resources Committee meeting schedule as I guess amended. I, I so move. Okay. Um, can yep. Do I hear a second before we discuss changes? Can I get a second? Or do we want changes before we get the second? Andy? I, that's uh, your decision. Are you recommending a change? Um, I did, I was just looking at, uh, excuse me, I was just looking at the, uh, the Jewish holiday schedule. Uh, I didn't know if you had I attempted to, um, but help me out because I don't know all the major Jewish holidays, so I could have um, missed some. I was just checking it. That, okay. um, I th oh, think that yeah. I don't see any, but I uh, didn't. Um, I just wanted oh. to make sure that you did. Well, yeah, my calendar has on Wednesday, the 8th of April, Passover begins. But I don't think that should make a difference because I, I believe that means, with the way the calendar is going now, that it begins that evening and we meet early in the morning. So that probably should be okay. Let me see what my calendar says for that. And that was April 8th. 8th. I think meeting on a Monday and a Wednesday morning. So I think it early begins gets in the out of a evening lot of because my calendar shows. I guess it was in Hebrew, which is why I didn't get that. That was Passover, Pesach one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it it would it has a one listed for the ninth and a two for the tenth and a three for the eleventh, which means probably the eighth in the evening is yeah. when it's starting, not the seventh in the evening. So. It, is, is it okay then to still meet in the morning then? I think so. Okay. Any other questions, Andy? Thank you for translating the Hebrew for me. Now I know. No, I hadn't done it until okay. just now, and I think I didn't spot anything um, that was a concern, but I just wanted to make sure somebody else had checked. Uh, obviously, there are individual dates where we might be on know that we have vacations for some of the indicated dates, but I'm assuming that that was not the intent, that we know that that's always going to occur, because yeah. I checked off two dates I, of the list that I know I won't be here, but uh, so be it. Okay, so we have the motion to adopt as amended, which is to, the amendment is to add the retreat date onto the calendar for everyone to be able to see. Do I have a second? Pat seconds. Um, any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. We've got a four to zero with one absent adoption. That then brings us to, I believe, uh, presentations, there are none. Minutes, we have two sets of minutes to adopt. In the packet, there are revisions to those minutes. Um, so th that should be the document we're looking at. We'll start with November 6th, 2019, with the revisions of 1122. Andy? Oh, I thought you were raising your hand, sorry. Um, the revisions to that were to just put in some of the agenda items that there weren't any so that it acknowledges that we had 
public comment on the agenda, but there was none. Um, repeating the motion so that it's clear that it was adopted. And then um, for this one, adding the names and for the presentation of the next steps on smart growth and 40R and adding the counselor questions um, on into it and then and fixing that the adjournment, I adjourn these meetings without a vote. I just declared unadjourned, so just fixing that. Which date are we on? November 6th. Okay. The revisions are listed as 1122 would be the okay. document. Yeah. Any other revisions besides the ones presented? Andy? One thing I didn't understand, and I just uh, pointing at that there's language that I found confusing was uh, on the top of the, I believe the second page, the words are, and on the impact on public transit on utility of housing accessibility. It is the first paragraph on the second page discussion of the town. We could get rid of the words, um, the impact. I think the on is supposed to be of, so on the impact of public transit on housing accessibility. Get rid of utility of. Does that make more sense then? Yes. Okay. So those changes will also be made. Any other recommended changes to this one? Seeing none, I'll take a motion for the November 6th minutes to be adopted as amended. So moved. Any second? Seconded. Any more discussion? All those in favor of adopting the November 6th minutes as amended, raise your hand, say aye. aye. That is aye. a 4-0 vote with one absent. I have a minor comment. Yep. Um, when you look at the packet, it has the date, but when you print it out, the date's not on it. Sorry. On the printout of the min minutes? Yeah, it says oh, the minutes approved So on when you, to get it, the date's there on the, on the oh. internet, but on the document itself, the date's not there, so. We will add the date, minutes of certain meeting. Let me put that on. And obviously the minutes approved on will get added. Okay. And so our next set of minutes is the November 20th minutes. There is a revision of November 22nd too. Um, the video web address, we obviously have to find the web address. If it's on the web, we'll add the web address to it. Um, We'll add, oh, this one has the November 20th, 2019 at 8.30 a.m. minutes. So this one does list it, the second line. So it must have just been missed. The revisions on this one were just to add where the agenda items were, what, you know, the bolds, what agenda item they were, just for reference for people trying to compare. Um, and then there's some cleaning up of some language of who did stuff, I think. Um, and I think that's most of the amendments on this. Any other requested amendments, Andy? Uh, yeah, I just uh, having some problems because I did my notes on the wrong version, but um, in number five, yep. first paragraph, uh, last line, uh, the enterprise fund capitalized um, you also know that currently the buses fall under the same enterprise fund. Which this is parking. downtown parking, separate funding source, which you're in the first paragraph of downtown parking? 
Yes. The one that starts town council has given The last CRC. sentence, uh, the same enterprise center should oh, be enterprise center fund. Okay. I, and it sorry, should it be, was. <laughs> it should be capitalized because enterprise, enterprise fund, fund is an yes. actual entity and it's enterprise okay. fund, not enterprise center. Okay. Any other recommended changes? I have to go back on um, public comment. Public comment. Um, if the, in the last sentence yep. um, where it's quoting me, I think that I, that I really said in uh, something like um, the process. Um, should include professional or committee uh, support. For the process of direction for the planning. Um, it seemed like um, what I really was intending was should include professional or committee support for the planning board and the town council. So after after the word direction and before the word for you would add no I would uh, I would just take out of direction and say after the word process say should include professional or committee support okay. for the planning board and town council. Okay. Any other? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adopt the. November 20th, 2019 minutes as amended. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Any second? Second. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> and any more discussion? All those in favor of adopting the November 20th, 2019 minutes as amended, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. we get three, any nays? I see no no's, any abstentions? We have one abstention, which is Pat, and we have one absent. And with that, they are passed. We will get them on the website as quickly as we can. Um, I will get them to our clerk to do that. With that, are there any announcements? Seeing no announcements, um, there are no items I did not anticipate 48 hours in advance, which means I am going to declare this meeting adjourned at 10.21 a.m. on the whatever day it is, December 4th. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs>